much for the latest on this. Joining me now, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor David Bruno and American Majority CEO Ned Ryan. Thank you both, gentlemen, for being here. Uh, David, let me Thanks, begin actually. with you. Sure. You say that the underlying conduct by uh, Director Comey and his officials is troubling. Troubling. And absolutely. may be criminal. What, what, where does the line get crossed to be for it to be criminal? Well, right now, there is an inspector general investigation that's going on, mm. and we will be getting a report shortly. Mm. Uh, but the most troubling aspect of this is the edits that we just heard about in right. the memorandum. Because w one of the edits it <clears throat> took away the language in the federal statute that would have made it a crime for Hillary Clinton to abuse the classified documents. Right. And that's gross negligence. It was originally included, and for whatever reason by whoever, it was modified, it was, re it was redacted, and it was changed to carelessness. Right. Which got Hillary Clinton off the hook, essentially. Sure. If you get away from gross negligence into carelessness, it's no longer a federal crime. All right, Ned, let me get to you. I was reading your uh, talk, talking points. You have some strong views on this. You were saying, look, uh, you talk about uh, Mueller's team, a partisan pack of wolves. You say this, uh, the right. findings are chilling. Um, kind of expand on that a little bit. I mean, what was the most troubling aspect of this? Well, first of all, I mean, I think it's becoming very clear over the last couple of weeks that Mueller's team is a partisan pack of wolves. When you look at Peter Strzok, when you look at Andrew Weissman, when you look at Jeannie Ree, and now you look at Aaron Zebley, mm. I mean, th I'm very hard pressed to think that these people are objective, and I think our biases influence a lot of our decisions as human beings. So to say that it's partisan, I think, is an understatement. But even more so, Ashley, I think what we're yeah. seeing is the unfolding, the unwrapping of what I think is one of the biggest political crimes we've seen in our history, in which our government and a political party colluded together to undermine and to destroy and nullify the election of the other party. And so I think when we look at this, all of the American people, they should find this chilling. They should be deeply mm. concerned about what's taking place inside their government. And I think there's more to come, Ashley. I think we're going to see more revelations coming out in the coming weeks in which people will start to fully understand this is not good. And I will say this, if Mike Pompeo and Jeff Sessions and mm -hmm. Christopher Wray are concerned about the Constitution and the civil liberties of the American people, they will protect those and not the institutions. They should be more concerned about our freedoms than protecting institutions. You know, David, look, we all have our own opinions, our own political leanings, if you like, and okay, so these FBI uh, uh, investigators have their own political likes. But right. the line seems to me, there were some certain excerpts from some of these texts or emails where they say, look, you know, they, they make reference to the point that we need some sort of insurance policy sure. just to make sure that this right. guy, i.e. Donald Trump, doesn't get elected. To me, that crosses the line. No, you I know, agree. we can't take the risk. Um, you know, to Ned's point, there's almost, you know, people talk about the deep state conspiracy. I mean, this really smells doesn't smell right, let me put it that way. Now, I, I agree with you. There is nothing wrong with a bias, so long as it sure. doesn't result in actions that are against the law. Right. right? Change so, the course of history, so maybe. Generally speaking, the fact that one has a political affiliation is not a problem. However, mm -hmm. if it goes to the next step, and like you said, in the August text message yes. with uh, 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 Agent Strzok, yep. talks about an insurance policy, and it also talks about a discussion in Andrew's office, yep. and that could be That's Andrew right. McKinney. Correct. about uh, the, the election, which yep. could be a hatch violation. Hatch violations are when the, it, the government talks about political affairs or gets right. involved in political actions. Possible hatch violation if that, in fact, took place. So, Ned, I mean, obviously you believe we should have an investigation of the investigators. I mean, how should this be playing out? Should, uh, should Mueller be coming out and addressing this right away? I think what needs to... Well, I, I do. I, at mm. this point, though... I was talking with a former DOJ official, and he said, I still actually respect Mueller, but I will find any of his findings not believable. And yeah. so I think you've got a credibility problem. But actually, even more importantly, what are we even talking about with this investigation as a whole? I believe it was started on false pretenses, a fake dossier that spun all of this up. And so I would actually argue that the investigation as a whole, regardless of the partisan nature of the team, is illegitimate in and of itself. And so I think we need to start having that conversation about is this investigation even a legitimate one moving forward? That's a good point. What do you say, David? Well, I talked about the inspector general before. Right now, the inspector general is reviewing the Hillary Clinton FBI investigation. Right. And the inspector right. general's office is the watch, watchdog over the DOJ. So if there's any improprieties going on in the Mueller investigation right now, there will be a review at some point by the inspector general.
Ned, you know, what we want and what we're not getting is we want some sunlight on this and we want transparency. Um, That's right. You know, uh, how do we do that? What's, what should be done from this point forward? We declassify. I think the only mm. way that the people of, Amer of America can start to trust the DOJ and the FBI again is I think we need to have some extreme transparency. I think we need to go back and declassify, declassify a mm -hmm. lot of what took place over the last eight years. I know that some people, again, the heads of these uh, departments right now might not be comfortable doing that. But, Ashley, I think that's the only way we can get back to having trust and faith in these institutions is yeah. to really declassify what happened with Clinton and Loretta Lynch on that tarmac in Arizona. What really did happen with Comey's, uh, uh, you know, clearing of Hillary Clinton? What right. happened with Peter Strzok? The only way we get to that, we have to declassify. And, of course, David, in the background of all of this is we have the Russia, Russia, Russia investigation, the collusion sure. which the president uh, addressed earlier today when you're saying there is no collusion. What have you found so far? They haven't found anything. Right. right? I mean, well, we don't know. Right. We have multiple it's indictments. Been going on for a long time. We have a couple of indictments. We have two pleas, one by sure. George Papadopoulos and, and yeah. Michael Flynn. But directly uh, linked to... Right, and, and that crimes. is pending. It's going on. We don't know. We will see. At this point, absolutely, we have not seen any collusion or conspiracy that goes right to the White House. Yeah, and Ned, how Ashley, long does this go on for? Well, this, but the point I want to make is we've had this thing going on for at least a year and a half, almost right. two years, and I've made this argument to people. Use your common sense. You, have, you had heads of intelligence agencies that didn't like Trump. You mm -hmm. have a deep state bureaucracy that doesn't like Trump, and you have the opposition party, the mainstream media, that doesn't like him. If there was actually something there, don't you think we would have heard of it by now? <laughs> and so I've so. argued, again, there, there's not been evidence, there isn't any evidence, there never will be evidence of the fairy tale of Trump-Russia collusion. All right, we'll have to leave it right there. David, Ned, thank Pleasure. you so much. Great conversation. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Ashley.